Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion, and I am coming to you from Highland Park, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. And the 23 behind me is Michael Jordan's old estate. When I was a kid growing up loving watching Michael Jordan, they used to show little documentaries and things from his house, show him practicing on his own court and everything. And that was actually this house. You would see, they would show these gates, and uh, he doesn't live here anymore. hasn't lived here for quite some time, and it looks like it's been for sale for quite some time. Originally listed at like $25 million, now uh, a steal at 15. If anybody wants to buy it, please invite me and I'd love to take a tour. <laughs> so anyway, that uh, really has nothing to do with our vlog today other than I had to see it and it's very Chicago and also very Chicago, John Hughes. So we are gonna go visit the grave of the great John Hughes today. Days with Jordan the Lion and you all, it begins right now. Yeah, I just always wanted to come see this. I always forget about it, and then recently it popped into my head. Just wanted to see it. Just imagine all the times he would have driven out, in and out of this place, and with who. There is a basketball at the very top. It's got those really cool 23s. I saw they busted somebody recently for breaking and entering, so don't try it. All right, let's hit the road. John's buried out at Lakeside Cemetery. Here it is. It's probably going to take me a little time to find where exactly he is in here. There's not a really great description online, so I'm just going to have to do some looking. I love his movies. What he wrote, directed, produced, just amazing. Actually, not hard at all. As soon as I drove in, I see Hughes over there, so I think that's him. And we came in right over there. Made a left, and he is right here. I kind of freaked a little bit at first because if you saw my Dudley Moore uh, grave when we went and saw him and visited him, there was a deer staring at me as soon as I parked, and then I came up here and saw this statue of the deer, and I was like, oh, no, not again. Here he is, the great John Hughes. This guy, amazing. Oh man, he was born in Michigan, but the his family moved out to Chicago when he was 13, which are actually some of the toughest years of your life. And he just fell in love with this place. Made it his home and then most everything that he wrote, he either wanted filmed here or the setting was here, but he didn't actually start out with a career in the film industry. John married his high school sweetheart and actually was a creative coordinator for a marketing company. And while he was on a business trip when he was 29, he said he was just feeling like, I feel like I wanna do more with my life and I don't wanna be 75 wishing that I would have done something different. So when he, Stopped in New York for a business trip. He actually popped into the National Lampoon headquarters uh, the magazine and met with the editor there and ended up getting a Part-time position with them and did that for a year and then they promoted him gave him full-time He loved living in Chicago So he told them that uh, one of the stipulations for him taking the job was that he got to live in Chicago and would only come and like commute in for the meetings in New York so when you see his movie, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, and you see Neil Page trying to get home to Chicago from New York where he works, that's kind of where that story came from. He contributed a lot to the National Lampoon magazine in the time that he was there for those first couple years. So when they had success with their first movie, Animal House, they wanted him to work on a script for their next movie. And he came up with something called <laughs> Jaws 3 People Zero. And they didn't make that, but he also came up with Class Reunion and they did make that, but he was never happy with it. He said they changed too much about his original screenplay. And so when he wrote his next screenplay, he wouldn't give it to National Lampoon. It was actually the hit Mr. Mom with Michael Keaton. John said that was totally based off of his life when his wife went back to work and he was a house husband taking care of the kids. But he also wrote, she's having a baby. And that was also about his life. So you kind of could see the movies that he was writing, they always had some tie in to his life. So she's having a baby was also made. And then, you know, he ended up writing about his childhood. 
he came up with, you know, well, basically what happened was National Lampoon pulled out one of his stories called Vacation 58 and they optioned it to be made into a movie. And that was what became National Lampoon's Vacation. And he loved seeing Anthony Michael Hall in the movie. So when he started writing other films, he started casting Anthony Michael Hall in him or writing them for him because he saw so much of himself in him. So then he wrote Weird Science. <laughs> I mean, the guy was do always doing something. He wrote Detention, which was supposed to be a TV movie. It was gonna be low budget and then it turned out to be so good that they wanted to make it a an actual real movie in the theaters. And so he had written it to all take place in a school on a Saturday for detention. That's the movie that we would end up knowing as Breakfast Club. But he told him, he said, hey, I want to, you know, even though this is all one set and it's kind of like a play, I want to film it in Chicago on a sound stage because I want to get these kids out of L.A. I want to get them all in that environment, living in the same hotel and everything. And really captured a lot of magic in that movie. Um, the actors would all say that he was really good about letting you ad lib or creating something outside of his dialogue. He was not tied to it and he always became friends with the people he cast. He said, when I cast people, if I don't think I'll become friends with them, I'm not gonna cast them. So he said when he saw just the picture of Molly Ringwald, he cast her right away. He could just see something in her. While he was getting ready to actually make Detention, he had written 16 Candles and that, a big studio wanted to make that and they wanted him to direct it. And so he cast Molly Ringwald in that as well. So you can see how busy this guy really was. I mean, he went from 16 Candles to then making the movie The Breakfast Club. And then he wrote, well, then he did Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which was also pretty much about his life. It was, he was basically Ferris Bueller. He was obsessed with music and always clashing with his principal and his room. He said that he decorated Ferris's room basically himself because that was the way his room was. It was just wall to wall pop culture. When he would do his movies, he would pretty much always come up with a soundtrack himself as well because he felt like the soundtrack was just as important to the movie as anything else, maybe even more so. He was writing movies at such an astronomical rate that he couldn't even direct them all. <laughs> so he formed a production company and things like Pretty in Pink and um, Some Kind of Wonderful and The Great Outdoors were things that he had Her Howard Deutsch uh, or Dutch, or I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce his name, but he ended up directing all of those movies because they're just, you know, you couldn't spread John Hughes any thinner than he already was. And he would say he would write really fast, like sometimes a screenplay in like three or four days. So he was actually going to direct The Great Outdoors because one of his favorite actors in the world was John Candy. He loved John Candy but he had written planes, trains, and automobiles, and that was really near and dear to him. And when Steve Martin accepted the part of Neil Page in planes, trains, and automobiles, John went to Howard and said, hey, we gotta switch. I gotta do this movie. I gotta direct this. And that movie is just an absolute Thanksgiving classic. It's one of the funniest movies, some of the funniest dialogue of all time. And for some reason, John and well, John Hughes and John Candy, they got along really great. I mean, almost like brothers. People would say that, you know, they saw a lot in each other. They both married their high school sweetheart. Um, they both were chain smokers. They both were obsessed with music. There's John's childhood sweetheart and longtime wife. So we love working with John Candy so much that he would write Uncle Buck so that they could continue working together. If uh, there was anything even that John was producing and John Candy had a free day or two, he would try and get him a, a small part on there just so they could hang out. It's pretty amazing. And then of course, he didn't direct it, but he wrote one of the biggest Christmas movies of all time, Home Alone. And of course, John Candy was there in Home Alone as well. It's kind of, amazing just in all the movies i've already talked about there his career wasn't even done he had a lot of movies that were fan favorites maybe but they were considered major flops like dutch with ed o'neill which i loved 
It was kind of thought that at that point he was taking elements that he had seen, you know, from like Home Alone, he saw what people really liked about that, the physical stuff, and he was incorporating that into his movies. Baby's Day Out, things like that. Just not major hits. Then he would write movies that he didn't direct. He would do like uh, Flubber and Dennis the Menace. And then after a while, he just kind of lost interest. He had done everything that you could do and he just kind of started hanging out at his farm and enjoying his life. You know, like Ferris Bueller said, life moves fast. If you don't stop to look around, you might miss it. So that's what he was doing. But apparently right at the end of his life, he had a granddaughter. And uh, you see here, it says husband, father, grandfather. His granddaughter at school told all of her friends that he was the director of Ferris Bueller and everybody thought that was so cool. And when she told him that, he got really inspired again. So there was talk that he was working on another project or was starting something he was going to do. But unfortunately, on a family trip to New York, he had a massive heart attack and died. He was not very old at all. 59 years old. <sighs> They said he was heartbroken when John Candy passed away. You know, basically, like I said, he always cast people he kind of saw himself in. And, ah, oh, what a loss, man. When you think of 80s movies, I mean, the, the underdog, the clashing with parents, the, the kid that sometimes is smarter than the parents realize, the, the awkward kid, the, you know, he just memorialized every type of person from that time period. Man, are you sorely missed John Hughes. Rest in peace. Apparently the last movie that he directed was Curly Sue with Jim Belushi and apparently that was one of those few times that he and his lead actor did not get along. And, um, and so, yeah, he decided after that he just didn't have the passion to do it for a while and took that long hiatus. Thank you all for watching. We will see you next time. Have a great night and goodbye.